Hey everybody, my name is Ryan Fontenot and I serve as a leader of a ministry called Rage Ministries. It simply stands for Reaching a Generation Endangered. I don't know what brought you here to click on this video that says, hey, I wanna know how to be saved, but I'm so glad you did. And I wanna just take a few minutes to share with you a message of hope, a message that literally can change your eternal destination. And I wanna do that by sharing four simple truths with you. Number one, I want you to know no matter where you are, no matter who you are, that number one, God loves you. You see, there is a heart and this heart reminds me about God. And the fact about God is this, is that God, God created you, that you are no accident. Hey, you are no mistake. As a matter of fact, the Bible talks about you like this, that the Lord he knit you together in your mother's womb. That the Lord says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I want you to get this. I, I don't know what you've been told. I don't know what your life story is, but I want you to hear this from me. God made you. You are here for a reason. He designed you. He intended you. You are no accident. But God didn't just make you. God loves you. See, this heart reminds me that God, God made me. And God, God loves me. Maybe, maybe you've been told by a lot of people in your life, I love you. Maybe you've never been told by anybody in your life, I love you. But God tells us in his word, he loves us. As a matter of fact, in John chapter three and verse 16, the Bible says it like this, for God so loved the world that you could take that word world out and put your name in there. It could read like this, for God so loved Ryan. See, the Bible says that our God is not just a God who created, but he's a God who loves. And that reminds me of the third thing about God. Not just that he made us, not just that he loves us, but listen to me close. God wants us and God wants you. God desires for you to know him. God created you for relationship with him. He doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't want you to be separated from him. He wants you to know him and be known by him. So when, I, when, I, when you come here and you say, hey, I want to be saved, it all starts with knowing who God is. God made you, God loves you, and God wants you. But you may be sitting there going, Ryan, well, if that's true, then why do I feel alone? Why do I feel empty? Why do I feel helpless? Why do I feel like my whole world is falling apart? Well, that's because of this next symbol you'll see, the division symbol. Yes, God loves you and made you and wants you, but sin, sin has come in and sin has infected you. Just like me and just like everyone that's ever walked planet Earth, that there is sin that we all are born with and sin we choose to do. And the Bible says that all have sinned and we fall short of the glory of God. And when sin infects us and we choose, to rebel against God, listen, that sin separates us from God. And the reason you feel like your world is falling apart, the reason you feel alone, the reason you feel empty, listen, the reason you and I search for all the things in this world to fill us up, but they leave us empty, is because sin has separated us from the one and the only one who can fill us. So God loves us and made us and created us, but sin Sin infects us and separates us. But can I tell you one other painful but powerful reality? Sin kills us. The Bible says that you are dead in your transgressions and sins. That yes, physically you are alive. Right now, if you're listening and you're breathing and your heart's pumping, you're alive physically. But spiritually you are dead. And so was I when I was in my sins separated from God. And I know that sounds like bad news, but that bad news is going to drive us to the good news, which is it's represented by the cross. The cross reminds us about Jesus. So I want you to know God made you. God loves you and God wants you. But sin, sin is real and it separates you and it has killed you. And so Jesus, Jesus came. See, the next part of that verse of John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world listen, that he gave his only son. See, Jesus Christ is the son of God who came. And the Bible says that he came to seek and save the lost. 
The Bible says this is a trustworthy saying that Christ Jesus came into the world. Don't miss this. To save sinners. When I say you're a sinner and you've rebelled against God and that your sin has separated you from God, no, that's true of all of us. And that's why Jesus came. God demonstrated his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So I want you to get this picture. God loves you. Sin has separated you, but Jesus came to save you. In other words, Jesus came to bring you and me back to God. He is the way for you and I to be restored in the right relationship with God. But it all comes down to the question mark. What are you going to do with Jesus? A lot of people ask, or rather say, a lot of people will say something like this. All religions are the same. They basically teach the same thing. But you know where all religions differ from Christianity? Jesus. What are you going to do with Jesus? It's the most important question you'll ever answer. Knowing that God loves you, made you, and wants you is great. Understanding that sin separates you and has killed you is important. Knowing that Jesus came, he died, he rose again to offer you and me life is vital. But what are you going to do with that? Imagine I showed up to your house and I said, hey, someone has passed away and they've given you a check for $1 million. And I say that $1 million is yours. And I hand you the check. Now, if all you do is hold on to that check, put it on your desk in your home and leave it there, does that ever become yours? No, it doesn't become yours until you sign your name on the check and you make the deposit. That's when it becomes yours. And you know what? The gift of eternal life is yours right here, right now, available. Jesus has held his arms out on the cross saying, I want you. And all that he's waiting on is for you to say, Jesus, I want you. Romans 10, 9 says it like this. If you right now will confess, that word confess means admit. If you will admit right now with your mouth, Jesus, you are Lord, you are King. And he says, if you'll confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Listen at this promise. It is powerful and it is life-changing. This is actually the verse that the Lord used to save me. I realize this, Jesus, I need you to be my Lord, my God, my Savior, my King. Jesus, I know you're alive and I want you to live inside of me. And at 18 years old, I turned from my sin. I turned from myself and I trusted all of me to Jesus. I invited him in to be Lord and God and Savior of my life. And my life has never been the same. No, my, my life has not been perfect. No, I haven't gotten it right every time. I've messed up plenty all along the way. But I know that on that day, Jesus moved in. The Holy Spirit sealed me. I became a child of God and my life was forever changed. And today, yours can be too. So if you are serious right now about saying, hey, I want Jesus. I need Jesus. I'm ready for Jesus to be my king. Would you do me a favor? Would you right now invite him in? Imagine someone knocking at your door. Imagine someone coming to your house and they're knocking on your door. Just because they knock doesn't mean they come in. No, you've got to come to the door. You've got to open the door and you've got to invite them in. And many of you right now watching this video, I believe you hear Jesus knocking on your heart's door. And what you need to do right now by faith is open up the door and through prayer, invite Jesus in. So if you're ready for that to happen right now, would you just say this right now, right where you are? Dear Jesus, I believe you are Lord. Just tell him right now where you are. Jesus, I believe you are King. And I want you, tell him that, I want you to be my King, to be my Lord, to be my God. And Jesus, I believe you're alive. Tell him, I believe you're alive 
and I want you to live inside of me forever. Jesus, save me right now. I am yours. If right now, by faith, with your mouth, you did that, the Bible says that you have been born again. You have been saved. Not because you are awesome, but because Jesus is awesome. Not because you deserve it, but because he said he would do it. And if you today confess Jesus as Lord, believed in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you are saved. You are brand new. God loves you. Sin separates you, but Jesus has saved you because you have said yes to him as king. Hey, if today you made that decision, I want to encourage you to let us know. Right now on the screen, you're going to see a, a link that will take you to a page where we can record your decision and get you some information. If you're not connected with the church, we'll help you connect with the church. If, you, uh, if you're looking for next steps, we'll give you some next steps. So just follow that link on the screen. We'll get you all the information to help you take those next steps. I believe today your life has been changed forever and it's not the end today is just the beginning. I hope that you will let us know of the decision you made, and we can't wait to help you take those next steps. Lord, thank you today for changing them forever. In Jesus' name, amen.